Hello everyone, Alfred Cromwell here, the founder and president of City Tutoring, a tutoring service dedicated to mathematical rigor and excellence across the United States. I wanted to uh, mention to you a couple of, this video is going to be a couple of announcements of what you can expect this week on this channel. The first thing is, as I mentioned in my previous video, you can now write to me, Alfred Cromwell, and my address is 4925 Boonesboro Road, spelled B-O-O-N-S-B-O-R-O, -O -O, and you can write R-D for road, in Lynchburg, Virginia, 24503. And I do really like to receive handwritten letters because I believe we've lost the art or we're losing the art of, of handwritten letters. And one of the things I enjoy the most is to receive handwritten letters. Uh, emails are okay too, but I, I always find it a bit more interesting when I receive a, a personalized email. Now, I cannot guarantee that I can respond to every single uh, letter that I receive, because sometimes, you know, what happened last year was I was getting, this, at some point, some months I was getting hundreds of letters. But I, I do read them all. I do read them all. I am not allergic to reading. You know, I'm from a different generation where reading was normal. Uh, and so I'm not, I'm not allergic to it, but I don't guarantee that I can respond to everyone. I do my very best to respond to at least 10. But you know, nowadays, with the, the, way, the, things are, the way things are going, communications come so quickly. But if there's anything you want to uh, send me, in terms of letters or anything that you want to donate uh, also to City Tutoring so that we can continue to spread the mathematical message and, and math rigor to a, a broader range of students, that's always welcome as well. But feel free to, um, to, to send that. So thank you all who have subscribed to this channel. As I said, I never would have thought everyone who knows me in person, they know for a fact that what I am saying is a fact they would never have imagined and let alone myself that in just a month or two i was going to have more than seven thousand subscribers on a channel that that is just absolutely amazing to me and i it, it's all thanks to you and you have valued the work that we do and even though we don't deserve it because i find that you know i can always do better and i take your comments very seriously so those of you who have said that they wanted to see i i, I had a gentleman who wrote to me personally he actually wrote me a letter last week was beautiful. And he said, you know, I like your channel. I like everything you do, but you need to be more careful with your, with the editing, with the technology. And he was honest. I appreciate honesty. I, I'm not someone who, you know, there's a lot of people nowadays in the United States and even in, in the Western world in general, they shy away from having strong opinions. Have you, have, has any, uh, have any of you had that experience? It's almost seen as if you have a strong criteria about something, you're considered to be aggressive. We are living in a politically correct, weak society, a society of, uh, we, I hate to use this term, but it's almost a feminized society. And what I mean by feminized is a soft society. We have become a lot softer. Uh, well, I haven't, but a lot of people have become a lot softer in recent years. Even some so-called people who call themselves uh, traditionalists, they have become a lot soft. They are seeding, uh, they are consenting to a lot of the arguments, a lot of the postmodern attitudes have been assumed and accepted by a lot of, even by a lot of Christians. And I do not accept the, the, the criteria of the postmodern, uh, of, of postmodernists in general. So, but anyway, I, I don't want to make this too political because then I get people who say, oh, your, your, your channel is so politicized as, as if they weren't political. You know, this, this past weekend, I had a, a very interesting discussion. I was, just, I was having a discussion with someone and I mentioned something about what, by the way, I want to pray for the people in Los Angeles, the victims of the fires in LA. If you're not in the United States, there have been some terrible fires in uh, Southern California. And I was mentioning to them the, the, the mayor of, um, of LA who has been terrible, terrible in, in, in her response to the people of LA, but you know that you, you get what you vote for. If the people of LA voted for her, that is the consequence of voting irresponsibly and voting for people who uh, don't really know what they're doing. Uh, and then, you know, there have been reports that a lot of people have noticed this and already in some, you know, CNN reports, and uh, I, I can't remember the exact uh, channel, but they're already playing the race card. They're saying, oh, you know, she's being criticized because of this and because of that. And it's just absolutely bonkers. It's, it's ridiculous. She is an incompetent mayor. And you can see the response that 
she has had uh, in Southern California and the consequences of that. But it, but that's a California problem at the end of the day. They voted for her. So they the, the, the people of specifically, I'm speaking of specifically Los Angeles, right? I'm not, spo- I'm not speaking of Malibu or other areas that have also been affected, but uh, I'm speaking specifically of LA. But anyway, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't change my opinions because they are unpopular. I've been unpopular since, you know, I was, since I can remember. And um, the, the important thing is not to be popular. The important thing is to be right. And the important thing is, uh, or at least attempting to be right. And I say attempting because we're living in an age where uh, moral relativism, that's a, that's a term that has lost, uh, has been lost in, in recent years. But people used to know what moral relativism meant. Moral relativism means that you don't have that you that you believe that morality is not objective. That you believe everyone should go their own way. That there should be no shared standards. And this is what has affected education as well, because if there are no moral standards, if there are no if there's no criteria from which to choose from, then you have the chaos and the anarchy that you see today and the de- the degradation of our educational standards. We're seeing it all across, not just in the United States, but in the Western world in general. But the other thing I wanted to mention also for this week is that we will be discussing mathematical induction. That is a another area that has been quite neglected in the past few years. A lot of institutions, even at the college level, have neglected mathematical induction. You know, right here in Lynchburg, we have three major universities. Uh, we have Liberty University, which is a uh, it's a private Christian university, and we also have Randolph College, which is a private university as well. Uh, although I believe they are non denominational, and then we have uh, Lynchburg. I call it Lynchburg College, even though it, the official name is the University of Lynchburg. And I get students both at the high school level where we do induction, and I also get college students as well from the area. I've also taught students from UVA up in Charlottesville. And none of those students, unless they are in honors, I'm speaking about, about the ones at UVA specifically, uh, if they are taking general calculus, they don't even do induction. So I'm saying, you know, I had a student last week, he was he wanted some help on derivatives, and he came to me, and he was, he was fascinated by the philosophy of city tutoring. And I, I said, what's the point of your class? What's the point? And he said, oh, you know, uh, that his instructor, I, which will remain nameless, he said that his, his instructor said that the important thing is uh, the concept and application. <laughs> I said, I, if that was an instructor in, in, in my academy, he'd be fired, he or she, because I don't want to give it away. Uh, but, but anyway, so we will be talking about mathematical induction in, in, in the next video. We're also going to talk about inequality. We're also going to talk about inequalities and how to tackle inequalities. I taught a class this past Saturday and a lot of the students, they're actually honor students and they are they are very motivated and they love mathematics. That's, they have a passion for learning and that's why they come to us on Saturdays as, a, as an enhancement. And they were so upset that they don't know, that they didn't know how to manipulate the more advanced inequality. So I'm gonna share a video, uh, I'm gonna share in this video a problem with you so that you can think about it. We're going to solve it in the next video. The last thing that we're probably, unless I think of something else, but the other thing I wanted to discuss this week with you all is, was my math Ivy League degree worth it? I have a lot of people who ask me that question all the time. They say, was was your university, was your Columbia University degree worth it? And I don't want to answer it in this video because there, there's a lot to say about that. But for those of you who do not know me, I got my, I, I earned my Bachelor of Science degree in math from Columbia University in the city of New York. And I don't want to say the year because it's, you know, then people start getting into age and all that. But uh, it was a long time ago and it was decades ago. And the, I also, and then I, after I studied at Columbia, I went off to England, to, uh, to London, and I got my my bachelor, my master's degree in pure mathematics, master of science in pure mathematics from the University of London, specifically Imperial College. And I was, I had the, the opportunity to live and visit different European countries. I, I, and, and I was able to compare, I was able to see 
how so many people operate, uh, how their governments operate. And, you know, it's interesting because I realized when I was living in Europe, I realized something that I've mentioned it in other videos before. But the more I lived in Europe, the less I was convinced that that was a system that I would want for America. And, uh, you know, I was surprised recently because actually Mark Zuckerberg, of all people, you would be surprised. He said the same thing that I said. Uh, and I said that before he did. I said, he said in his video on freedom of speech, he said, no other country in the world has the First Amendment. And that is fact. And when I lit, when I saw how, for example, the UK operates, you know, you've seen it in recent videos. The UK has had uh, the government, the British government has arrested people, patriotic people who are just for expressing their views. They've had police come to their homes and have them arrested. And that cannot happen in the United States because we have the First Amendment, which the, the British people do not. And because our forefathers, they were our forefathers were the children, were the sons of England, and they saw what what tyranny was. And that's why we included the Bill of Rights in our Constitution. And when I was with uh, among English people, uh, they are very similar to us in many ways. You know, you could tell that there's a, there's a deep, deep connection between the American people and the English people specifically. But, but a broader sense of the British people. And they used to, you know, kind of banter with me and they used to say, oh, you know, you Americans, you don't have. Uh, it was hilarious because they believe they have free health care. And uh, I would be the last person to defend the American system because the American system is actually not based on free enterprise. The health care system is not based on free enterprise. It's actually a, uh, a disgusting partnership between the government and private enterprise. So it's not really a free system in any way. But if the British believe that they have a, or the Europeans in general believe they have a free healthcare system, you don't actually, it's not free. Nothing in life is free. You pay a lot of taxes for it. That's why your salaries are so low uh, in, in Europe. And that's why you pay uh, a very high VAT taxes. For example, in the case of Britain, their VAT uh, funds, I don't know now, but I'm talking many years ago when I was there, their VAT actually funds their NHS. And those of you who are British and you are, I know a lot of British people watch me and uh, I love you all, but you know, you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know very well that the NHS is an article of faith in your country. You know very well that if you even attack the NHS, people will, will get actually borderline violent with you. Uh, so th there's, a, there's a socialistic dogma in, uh, in the United Kingdom about the NHS. But you know very well, if you're honest, you have waiting lists. A lot of your doctors are not even British. And you know what's what's going on. So uh, I'm not going to be intimidated by the, the arguments that say, oh, you know, our system is so much better. You have very long waiting lists um, and all of that. But I'm, but I don't defend. I'm not saying that the American system is ideal either. It isn't. Uh, and there's a lot of there's very serious problems with the American system. Most most of the problems with the American system have to do with overregulation. Actually, a lot of people don't realize that we're not, we don't have a free enterprise system in the United States. We have a mixed economy. But a lot of people they confuse and they think that the United States is a you know a purely free, uh, a, a purely a capitalist society when it's not. Unfortunately, it's not because we've had uh, in the past 50, 60 years over. Uh, over we are an overregulated country, but thankfully we still have some of the Bill of Rights left, even though the federal government has tried to take away a lot of those uh, of, of those rights. But hopefully we we remain vigilant. My fear is that the American people are becoming less and less vigilant of their rights. And they, are, they, they think that Europe is some kind of paradise. You know, you see it a lot in videos where uh, students and young people are moving to Europe and they claim that it's a paradise. You know, if you run away from your country, you are not doing any, yourself any favors. You are just, you're, you're the same person. You're still going to carry the same problems with you no matter where you go. It's not about moving away. It's about confronting your problems, confronting your demons, and trying to solve the problem with logic. You don't run away from your problems. And a lot of people, they run away. They go, they go off. There's, there's a trend now in America. They're, they, they, they're moving off to, they go off to Mexico, um, and they, they move off to, they go off to um, Spain, Italy, all these uh, Mediterranean countries in the south of Europe and then, or, or South America or central, in the case of uh, Mexico, North America, but south of the border. And uh, they're doing themselves no favor. They, they run away from their problems. But the other issue that I wanted to discuss was the state of education in America, which we will be continue. I mentioned it last week about how so many American students are failing at mathematics, but we're actually, I have more statistics that I got this week, uh, broken down by gender, uh, broken down by race as well. 
and there's a lot of people failing uh, across the board in STEM. And there was a debate recently, um, I believe Vivek Ramaswamy, who is, uh, I believe he was born in this country, but he is of Indian heritage. And he mentioned something about the H, I, I know he mentioned something about H-1B visas. And he was talking about uh, that, the, the general critique that he made was that American people in general don't value education uh, w- when compared to uh, immigrant parents. Uh, he, sp- he, speak- he was speaking specifically of Asian people, uh, South Asian, but also Asian people in general, not just people from India. And he was talking about how that has become an issue with the H-1B visas, right? Now, I'm not going to get it again. In this video, I wasn't going to get into that, but that's something to, to be discussing as well. So here is the inequality that I'd like to ask you to, to try and think about and solve. It is it says solve the inequality X over B plus B over A. And that is greater than X over A plus A over B for A and B. And X, of course, it belongs to the set of elements of the positive real numbers. And there's another restriction here, and it is that B is greater than A. So this is this is a problem, among others, that we're going to be solving in our next video, because the next video is going to be on inequalities. And as, as I said, I've had honor students who are not properly manipulating the, the inequalities. So that's why we're going to talk about the laws. And also, by the way, if you watched the last video that I mentioned, this right here, this book, Modern Introductory Analysis by Dolciani, uh, this, actually, this book actually gives a proof of the laws of inequalities. And if, you've ha- if you have the 1964 edition, which is the one I have, you can find that on page uh, 57. So if you're interested, you can look at that. If you have a copy of the book, you can look at that. You can get the book online as well, by the way. Uh, I've had some students do that because uh, there's no excuse not to get the book. I mean, you can get it online for sure. So that is what we're going to be discussing in our next video. And as I said this this week, stay tuned because we're going to be discussing the, uh, the method of induction, the inductive proof. And it's a it's an area that is often neglected nowadays in math, as as so many other math is uh, so many other mathematical laws and principles and proofs are neglected in our in our age of dilution and uh, participation trophies. So anyway, uh, stay tuned for my next video. And as I always say, please subscribe. Please continue to support this channel. There is no other channel on YouTube that I am aware of that is uh, doing that is doing this approach to mathematics. So uh, if you can uh, bear with me and if you can support what we do, I am great. I am eternally grateful to you. Thank you all.